Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Baltimore Orioles versus the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the Orioles today is Dave McNally, whose record is 14-8 with a 3.29 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots is Gene Brabender, whose record is 9-3 with a 3.17 ERA. Yes, that's some good news. We've got Gene Brabender back after missing over a month with an injury. And not a moment too soon because uh, we lost yesterday's game. We were never in that ball game. In fact, I think I said many times uh, throughout the game that that game was over on the first pitch of the bottom of the first inning. Um, we never had a chance. And the only other exciting news is that Freddie Potak has a 14-game hitting streak going on. He'll be in there today in the number two spot. And as I mentioned, we've got Bra Bender back. And we're hoping that he can keep the Orioles' offense in check long enough for us to get one run on the board. Just give us one run. That's all we need. So, okay. Um, let's go ahead and get started with today's game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like, and or subscribe to the channel. Gene Brabender. Okay, let me turn my volume down here on my headset. As that crowd noise was just blaring right at me. Okay, so Brabender, uh, he is excellent versus the Orioles. They're batting 086 against him in 38 plate appearances. You can't beat that. Take a look at our bullpen here. Uh, Freddie made a good suggestion, uh, and that is swapping... Skip Lockwood and Diego Segui and making Lockwood the setup man. Now, Lockwood has been pretty poor lately. Um, he gave up three runs yesterday. Only one was earned because uh, Souther Gary Sutherland made an error. So two of those runs yesterday were unearned. But he has been excellent otherwise. And um, I think we're going to give that a shot. We'll move uh, Diego Segui to the short relief role. Uh, but Lockwood will not be available today. He is um, tired after yesterday's whooping. Okay, and then here's our lineup versus Dave McNally. I put all of our best players in there, regardless of lefty-righty matchups. Um, I just want to win this ball game. I would have put Mike Keegan in there, uh, but actually Darren Johnson has been a better hitter at first base than Hegan and uh, Van Kelly uh, doesn't hit lefties well uh, neither really does uh, Kessinger but we're going to go with Kessinger, Kessinger today uh, anyway so I feel like this is the strongest lineup that we can have versus a left-hander okay let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Baltimore Orioles batting leadoff playing center field is Mac Jones Batting second at third base is Ron Santo. Batting third in left field is Willie Stargell. Batting cleanup and catching is L. Rod Hendricks. Batting fifth in right field is Frank Robinson. Batting sixth at second base is Davey Johnson. Batting seventh at shortstop is Jim Fragosi. Batting eighth at first base is Jim Campbell. And batting ninth is the pitcher Dave McNally. So same lineup as yesterday. Let's take a look at Brah Bender. He is on the verge of throwing his 100th strikeout of the year. That would give us three starters with 100 or more, which is kind of rare for my teams anyway. He's making his 20th start, going for his team high 10th win. Uh, his ERA is at 3.17. Opponents are betting 202 against him. Two complete games, two shutouts. His fastball is... Uh, at, uh, tops out at 87 miles an hour. He's a four-pitch pitcher with the slider and the sinker as his two best pitches. Overall at 82, the 28-year-old righty is arbitration eligible at the end of the year, and we will pay him some big money, yo. Let's take a look at the uh, game logs. And he did face Baltimore once way back in April. Going eight and a third innings. Oh, it, that was the one hitter. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
who hit the uh, who got the hit off of him in that ball game? I can't remember now who it was. Uh, that player, I don't think, is in the lineup today. But, uh, yeah, that was a one-hitter, almost a no-hitter, as we lost it there in the uh, in the ninth inning. That was a very exciting game. If you could find that one, go back, take a look at it if you haven't seen it. It was um, truly an exciting moment in this series. Okay, take a look at our defense here. First, second, and behind the plate. Um, all below league average. Otherwise, pretty sound everywhere else. Here we go. Mac Jones, a leading off versus Brabender. Brabender looked like he was going to get strike three, but Mac Jones connects with a ground ball to second. Sutherland throwing him out. One out. Here is Ron Santo. Santo popping it up in between first and second base. He's going to call for it. Looks like Darren Johnson will make the catch. Two down. Here is Willie Stargell. Stargell had two doubles in yesterday's game. And a comebacker to Brabender. And that was about as successful as you could hope for. A guy coming back from a big injury like that. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at our lineup rundown. Betting leadoff. Playing second base is Gary Sutherland. Batting second at shortstop is Freddie Patek. Batting third in left field is Lou Pinella. Batting cleanup playing first base is Darren Johnson. Batting sixth in right field is Tommy Agee. Batting seventh in center field is Don Bosch. Batting eighth. I'm sorry, I'm out of order here. This is batting seventh and catching is Jerry McNerty. Batting eighth at sh Third base is Don Kessinger. I just kind of want to start this all over. And the pitcher, Rob Bender's ninth. I'm sorry, I'm just so geared up. Let's take a look at Dave McNally. 14-8, making his 30th start. 3.29 ERA, 152 strikeouts and 216 innings pitched. Uh, six complete games, three shutouts. Fastball topping out at 89 miles an hour. His curveball is his out pitch. It's rated an 89. Uh, his fastball is an 81. Overall, rated an 88. The 26-year-old lefty goes to free agency in 1971. Look at his log. He faced us back on June 22nd. Got a no decision going eight innings, giving up three runs, striking out seven. And that is the only start here of record. Okay. Here we go. Oh, take a look at the defense. Yeah, they're same as yesterday. Um, deficient at first, left, and definitely in right field. We couldn't take advantage of that yesterday. Let's see if we can get it started here with Gary Sutherland batting 385 versus lefties right now. And a base hit to left field. Exactly what we wanted. Leadoff man is on. Here is Freddie Patek, as I mentioned. He is uh, on a 14-game hitting streak, but he's 0-4 with two strikeouts versus McNally. And he strikes out swinging three pitch at bat. All for strikes. That will bring up Lou Pinella. We're going to hit and run with Lou. Lou is in a huge slump. Huge slump. And... He doesn't even bother to swing. So, I mean, that you already know how this game is going to go. I mean, it just takes all the air right out of the game. Unbelievable. We go to the top of the second. Here's Elrod Hendricks leading off. There's a walk. Yep, here we go. Frank Robinson strikes out. There we go. Home, uh, strikeout number 100 for Gene Brabender. We've got three pitchers now over 100 strikeouts. I don't think Marty Patton's going to get there. Uh, he might not even <laughs> get 30 innings pitched. He needs 30. I believe he needs 30 Ks to get to 100. I don't think he'll even get 30 innings pitched. 
the way he's been pitching. Another walk. A comebacker to Brabender. Any chance of double play? Nope. He gets a force at second. And that will bring up Jim Campbell. 226 hitter, two home runs, 2 0 count. And a ground ball to second. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Not a good inning for Brabender. We have Darren Johnson leading off. He walks. Runner on first. Tommy Agee up. And a base hit to left. Johnson should hold. He does. We're going to throw the arms up. First and second. Nobody out. Don Bosch up. I know Bosch I almost took out of the ball game for Wayne Comer. But I like Bosch. He's only batting 254 against lefties. And a ground ball to second. The only play was to go to first with AG running there. So we have runners on second and third. One down. Oops. We are going to go on contact. And hopefully McNurtney will hit the ball to the right side. Infield's playing back. That doesn't make sense. Here we go. And he pulls it to the left side. Johnson scores. AG advances, and it's 1-0 Seattle. We'll take it however we can get it. Give credit to McNurtney putting the ball in play. And Kessinger strikes out. We jump ahead. 1-0. Top of the third, Dave McNally leading off. Wow. McNally crushes it. He's batting 220 this year. Fortunately, it was right at Lou Pinella for out number one. There's our third walk by Brabender. So, I mean, we would be best pulling him right now. Ground ball to second. Can we turn two? Nope. Jones goes to second as the only play was to first. Here is Willie Stargell. Pops is 0 for 4. Two strikeouts against Brabender, but this is not the same Brabender. Fly ball to right. Play made by AG. We go to the bottom of the third. Brabender, I guess we give him a chance to take a cut here. And he walks. That's so stupid. Seriously? I don't get it. Let's see if uh, Sutherland can lay down a bunt. Oh, I just got an order delivered. I ordered, um, this will be an I Got This video coming up later today then. I ordered some 1980-81 Topps Hockey uh, insert posters, mini posters. Um, pretty cool. I mean, for me anyway. We'll have that up later today, I guess. Okay, here we go. Lay down a bunt. Sutherland. Good bunt to first. Come on, Brabender. He does advance to second. So we've got a runner in scoring position, although that's a tall task to have Brabender score from second on a base hit. Here's Freddie Potek. He's 0 for 1 today. Struck out three times in his career. Versus McNally, almost the fourth time there. He does connect, popping it up into foul ground. Two outs, and Lou's up. Lou ruined the first inning by not swinging. And he hits a ground ball to short, and that'll do it. Oh, an error on the shortstop for Gozi. Unbelievable. I, uh... I don't know, man. We, we'll take it. We need this win. First and third, two down. Would the error happen unless something was going to transpire here for Darren Johnson? Let's see what happens. Full count to Johnson. He's already walked once and a ground ball to second. Nothing comes up. Holding on to a one-run lead. It's Hendricks, Frank Robinson, Davy Johnson coming up. Elrod Hendricks. 
Leading off by striking out. Second K for Brabender. Next up is Frank Robinson. Robinson had a home run yesterday. His 23rd on the season. Popping it up on the infield. Carrying to the outfield grass in shallow center. Out number two. And Davey Johnson up. He also had a home run yesterday. His 10th on the year. And we walk him. Brabender doesn't walk this many batters. We need to guard the lines now with Fregosi up. There's two down. We cannot let an extra base hit score a run. There's a ground ball to second. Sutherland had the costly error yesterday. Makes the play. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Tommy Ag will lead off. It's Ag Bosch and McNerty. Ag strikes out. One down. Don Bosch up. Bosch, he gets all of it. Nice home run to left center field. That is his ninth on the season. All nine of them had been with the Pilots. I mean, as we play him more, his power diminishes. And yet, at a below average power rating, he's managed nine home runs in 236 at-bats. And he plays good outfield. So, I mean, even though his rating is low at 73, we'll take it. 2 nothing on the home run by Bosch. McNerty dumps it into right center. Oh, it's going to be caught by the terrible defensive right fielder, Frank Robinson. Good hustle, though. Frank Robinson always hustling. And a comebacker from Kessinger. And it is 2-0 headed to the top of the fifth inning. Got the bottom of the lineup coming up with Jim Campbell leading off. 1-0 count to Campbell. Lots of ground balls to Sutherland today. Sooner or later, you know he's going to flub one. Rob Ender gets McNally this time, striking him out. And Mac Jones, third time through the lineup. Two for 11 against Rob Ender in his career. A line drive to left. Come on, Lou. Pinella making the catch. There are goose eggs on the board right now for the Orioles. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. I think we have to let Rob Ender... Stay in the game under the circumstances. Rob Ender batting 0.45 on the year. Fly ball to deep center field. 365 feet. That's incredibly unrealistic. One down. Here back to uh, Gary Sutherland. Sutherland's got a hit today. Fly ball to center. He was also caught stealing. There's out number two. And Freddie Patek. Come on, Patek. 14-game hitting streak on the line. 2-2 two -two count. Get down. No. It's going to be carry out to left field where Stargell makes the catch. We go to the top of the sixth inning. We've got a two-run lead, but the heavy hitters are coming up. So we definitely need to keep an eye on, on Brabender. He has walked four today, and Ron Santo will lead off. Ground ball in the hole is short. Patek not contributing at the plate, but makes a good defensive play. At what point do we bring in defensive players with the way, the way things are going here? Stargell popping it up. Patek will make the catch here, too. Two quick outs. Elrod Hendricks is up. He's walked and struck out today. 2-1 count to Hendricks. Line drive to the left. Come on, Pinella. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, this is an exciting way to come back from injury. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Pinella's going to lead it off. He is batting 340 versus lefties this year, but 0 for 6 versus McNally. And as I mentioned earlier, in a huge slump right now. Pinella popping it up to short. 
I mean, oh, and it's dropped by the shortstop again. That's the second error by Fragosi today. Maybe this is just going to go our way, the way things are uh, developing here. Pinella on first. Here's Darren Johnson. This could be a potential double play. Yep, there we go. As you might expect. Oh, Pinella hustling into second base. Orioles defense today is not as... I mean, the people that... Are, well, fergozzi has got a rating above league average. The players that are below league average haven't... You know, they've been playing good defense, so... I don't know. It doesn't really make sense how they dole out the errors. AG flies out to right center. Do we tag? Yes, we do. Pinella's safe at third. We need to get Pinella to third. That's a little bit of a risk, but Frankie doesn't have a good arm out there. Um, but with the possibility of a pass ball or a wild pitch or a balk or something, um, we got we got to get him over. We need all the runs we can get. Here's Don Bosch. Bosch walks. And that will bring up McNertney. He drove in the first run with a fielder's choice. So it's first and second. I'm sorry, first and third, two down. We're going to let McNerney take a cut here. 2-2 two, two count. Hard hit ground ball to second. And that'll do it. We are moving on to the seventh inning. Um, all right, so we are going to bring in a defensive replacement at first. That's Mike Keegan coming into the ball game in place of Darren Johnson. Johnson um, you know, below league average at first. So we've made a big improvement there. I think we keep Sutherland at second and we'll keep McNerty behind the plate. He's as good as throwing out base runners as Jerry May, our backup catcher. So that's really the only play we can go with here. Unless we bring in Van Kelly to play second. And I don't feel like, even though the rating is a big improvement, I don't feel like it's really that much of an improvement in results. Here we go. Frank uh, Robinson leading off versus Gene Brabender. Three righties due up in the seventh. 2-1 count. Ground ball right to Hegan. They will find you as soon as you get into the ball game. One out. Davy Johnson up next. Oh, one count to Johnson. Oh, good play by Sutherland. Yes. Oh man, I feel I feel I feel good about leaving him in there now because if I, if that would have been a base hit up the middle, and maybe Kelly had better range, I would have I would have hated myself. Two down. Here we go. Jim Fragosi at the plate, and there's the first hit of the game. Oh man. Damn it. Fragosi, one out away from taking his second no-hitter into the eighth inning on the season. And we've had a couple close ones this year otherwise, too. So, Oh, man. Full count to Campbell. He walks him to get to the pitcher. And they're going to pinch hit. So that's it for Brabender. 103 pitches in his return. We're going to bring in Ron Locke. Um, Locke, of course, is lights out versus left-handers. They're batting 163 against him. He has given up two home runs, though. One swing of the bat would give the Orioles the lead. Clay Dalrymple is in the game. Doesn't have a ton of power. He's a backup catcher. That's a weird person to bring in in a pitch hitting spot. Okay, first and second. Two down. Lefty on, lefty violence. And he pops it up. Pinella makes the catch. Well, we've lost the no-hitter. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Pete Richard is coming into the ballgame, 29th appearance, 5-3, three, a 3.52 ERA. 
He walks as many as he strikes out, but opponents are betting only 180 against him. No saves, one bluey, four pitch pitcher. Uh, he's got two different types of fastballs, a four seamer and a sinking fastball. Overall in 81, the 29 year old left-hander is a free agent next year. Richard, uh, also a lefty, so Kessinger will just bat like he was before as a right-hander. Fly ball in the left center field. Is that going to get down? Oh, it's going to be caught by Jones in center field. One out. Um, oh, damn. Do we leave Locke in there? Um, because we have four lefties coming up. We know John Morris can't get lefties out even though he is a lefty. I think we have to leave him in the ballgame. He's 0 for 3 this year. Why not? Full count. And he walks! Oh, <laughs> Ron Locke takes a walk. That's the second pitcher walk today, which is just, again, stupid as hell. I know it's in our favor, but it's just the dumbest thing ever. Here's Gary Sutherland. He loves to see the lefties. Popping it up, though, in front of home plate. Oh, another error! Come on! That's so stupid. That is an error on the catcher, uh, Hendricks. Well, okay, this is the good thing, though. Now, Freddie Potek will be up. He is 0 for 3. His hitting streak is on the line. This will probably be his last chance today. So this is a big at bat. 1-1 one, one count to Potek. Yeah, down the left field line. Make it 15 off the wall. Everybody scores. It is 4 to nothing. A pitcher walk and an error. And then the double. I mean, come on. We need this win. That is his ninth double as a pilot. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm grateful for the stupidity of the ball game. Politech. In scoring position for Lou. Lou, just get anything. Anything at all. Is that going to drop it? Get down. Oh, no. It's going to be caught by Jones. Oh, we don't need to tag. Jones has got a good arm. And Potek gets thrown out everything he does. Now Hegan will come in. Uh, not come in, but he'll get his first at bat, is what I mean to say. Does not hit lefties well as a lefty. And he pops it up as you would expect. So We're going to the eighth inning. We've got a four-run lead. I'm glad we left Locke in there. Because the lefties are coming to the plate here. Starting with Mac Jones. Ground ball to third. Kessinger. Throwing him out. One down. This is the tough one, though. Ron Santo betting 356 versus lefties. Ground ball to short. And out number two. So Locke doing the gerb. Here is Stargell. Stargell flips it to left, and Pinella makes the catch. We are moving on to the eighth inning. Now it seems inevitable. There were some doubts early on. AG strikes out. First K for Richard today in the second inning of work. Bosch strikes out, and Mick Nertney grounds out to second. So a pretty good job there, all in all, by uh, Richard. He wasn't helped out by his defense. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Um, there's no save that's going to take place here, so we're going to let Locke pitch to Hendricks, and then we'll get the last two outs here in the ninth. 2-1 count. Ground ball to first. Hegan makes the play. Out comes Ron Locke. A great job overall. You know what I'm going to do here? I could bring in Dickie Bates. But I feel like they would score a run. So we will, and we need this win. So we're going to bring in the closer in a non-save situation. There's three righties coming up. We want this win, and we'll take the shutout. It'll be our 16th if that happens, which is absolutely insane. There's a line drive to second. Sutherland makes the error. We knew that was coming. 
And this might be the the junk runs right here. The garbage runs. Um, we're going to guard the lines. Davey Johnson pops it up. And we are one out away from our 16th shutout of the season. And it's Fragosi. It's the guy that ruined the no-hitter. The only hit of the ball game. And we strike that sucker out. Seattle wins four to nothing. Handshakes, butt slaps, sloppy stakes. Five total hits, but that was as entertaining as it gets. Oh, and what is it? Like, that's the third shutout of the week. Last week we had three shutouts. Week one, we had two shutouts. So, eight shutouts in the month of August. And we still have a week and a half to go. Um, okay, let's take a look at the standings. Oh, uh, well, okay, well, San Diego got a win. There we go. Good job by him. Uh, them, the uh, Cardinals and the Mets are tied. And we did not gain anything on Oakland. We did gain on Minnesota. We're a half game behind them. Baltimore um, loses a game on Cleveland. Cleveland's too back. Don't sleep on Cleveland. All right. Headline news, Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Oakland pads their lead in the American League West. Um, <laughs> nice effort <laughs> by the Cub reporter. Give us, can you give us a paragraph? I can only give you one sentence. Uh, two homers for Duke Sims of the Indians. Oh, they beat the uh, Twins. Nice. And what else we got here? Senator scoreless as Ellsworth throws a shutout. Four nothing win for Ellsworth. Okay, let's take a look at transactions. Uh, we have one more retirement. Three retirements in a row. It's Minnie Minoso retiring at age 43. Don't worry, he'll be back at age 50, right, for the White Sox. But, uh, yeah, he's done. Okay. Um, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, we will have an I Got This coming up later today. Yesterday, we opened up a, um, or two days ago for Time Travel Tuesday, we opened up 1987 Topps Rack Packs. Found uh, Bo Jackson's rookie card and Mark McGuire's second year card, which is worth almost as much as the... Um, the Bo Jackson rookie card, so kind of kind of nifty there. We're going to give the player of the game to Freddie Patek uh, for getting his hit streak, uh, keeping that alive, and driving in two runs that, that really solidified the ball game. Uh, Gene Brabender, first Pilots pitcher to 10 wins. Uh, he didn't. He only gave up one hit in six and two-third, but the five walks is what uh, offsets uh, lack of... Uh, base hits and Ron Locke unsung hero going one and two thirds Mike Marshall closing it down getting a strikeout Dave McNally hard luck loser uh, falls to 14 and 9 so uh, that's going to do it we're going to come back tomorrow with game three of the four game series until then everyone have a great day